फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू वेलकम टू मई यूट्यूब चानल डी एंड डी पाठशाल इन एस्टे वीडियो वी हेव सीन द डेफिनेशन एपडमालजी इटियालजी एंड पैथो एंड द रिस्क फैक्टर्स ऑफ दिस कैबिस एंड द एक्जिमा डिज एंड इन टू डेज वीडियो वी विल बी सीइंग फ्रॉम द सैंस एंड सिम्टम्स टू द नॉन फार्मकोलॉजिकल ट्रीटमेंट एंड द डायग्नोस्टिक क्राइटीरिया एंड द ट्रीटमेंट सो वी विल बी सीइंग ऑल दीज डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ एलिमेंट्स सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विथ आर टू डेज वीडियो सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट आर द सैंस एंड सिम्टम्स ऑफ दिस कैबिस इन दिस कैबिस द सैंस एंड सिम्टम्स दैट विच आर सीन आर पिंपल लाइक रैशेस और बरोस दैट विच आर सीन बिटवीन द फिंगर्स एलबोज आम पिथ्स एंड ऑन द अपर एक्सट्रीमिटी रीजन लाइक एबडोम बैक ऑफ द हिप दैट इज ऑन द बटक्स और ऑन द व्रिस्ट रीजन ऑल्सो रेडिश स्किन विच कैन ऑल्सो बी सेट एज एरेदमैट स्किन एक्सट्रीम इचिंग दैट विच इज सीन ऑलमोस्ट ऑल ओवर द बॉडी एस्पेशली दिस इज सीन मोर एट नाइट टाइम पीरियड सो नॉक्टर्नल पीरियड एंड सोर्स आर ऑल्सो ऑब्जर्व ऑन द बॉडी दैट विच आर फॉर्म्ड बिकॉज ऑफ स्क्रैचिंग एंड दे कैन ऑल्सो बी इन्फेक्टेड समटाइम्स बाय द स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस ऑरियस एंड स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस पायरोजन टाइप्स ऑफ बैक्टीरिया and if any kind of previous exposure is not there then this incubation period will be about 2 to 6 weeks if the reinfestation means if it is again reinfected then it will be milder one so this milder one type of infection or infestation the incubation period will be up to 1 to 4 days so the milder incubation period in reinfestation is less when compared with if there is no kind of previous exposure so these are the burrows forming images between the fingers and in depth we can see these are the bubbly type of burrows that which are observed on the palms of the hands and these are between the fingers and this is the image which are, which will be showing the most affected areas like here on the wrist on the extremity region on the waist region and also on the back of the fingers and on the buttocks region so these are the most affected areas and these are some of the reddish type of erythematous type of skinny type of rashes now coming to the signs and symptoms of eczema so the symptoms of the eczema are actually characterized upon the staging of eczema so first of all as i have said in the previous video there are actually acute subacute and chronic so in acute eczema the symptoms will be like pain heat swelling and extreme type of redness like erythematous type of natured intense itching and fluid filled blisters so this fluid filled blisters are also called as the vesicles and in the subacute type in the eczema condition the symptoms will be like the flaky means scaly type of skin cracking aging and burning and the redness is also seen in some of the conditions and because of these type of conditions sometimes it is also seen in rare type of conditions also and in the chronic type the symptoms will be more like thickened and it will be looking like a leathery type of skin or lichenification so the leathery type of looking skin can also be referred to the term lichenification and cracks in the skin and sometimes dark dull and discolored type of looking skin and sometimes the excoriations can be also seen so excoriations means if the larger areas of the skin are break down then these are referred to as the excoriations so this is a presentation of the eczema symptoms so here if we see this uh, triangle image so first one is oozing to crusting scaling and healing so erythema papulars physical so oozing so from if we have if we see from the erythema so it is from erythema to papules means the water filled vesicles so oozing will be observed and crusting and scaling and healing so this is a classical type of presentation regarding the eczema and these are some of the images of the dermatitis that is the eczema condition so these are on the elbow regions and these are on the cheek and these are on the lips and sometimes on the wrist regions so this is the different kind of eczema pictures 
so now coming to the complications of eczema so the complications that which can be seen in this eczema disease so if this eczema is actually caused to a child then because of this intense itching or scratching by the child their life will be affected and the family's life will be also disturbed so how the family life is involved means the family will be suffered because of their child that their child is suffering in a such type of pain by scratching and by itching their family life will be also disturbed and it will also affect the health of the child and also the family like in the sleep disturbances and because of these itching and some of the symptoms it may also disturb the person's social life like if this itching occurs in some of the workplace regions or during any kind of meetings so sometimes even the jobs are also lost because of such type of unusual behavior and easily increased if the person comes into the contact knowingly or unknowingly with the allergens so some so many type of allergens are there like because of irritants or because of any pollens or because of any kind of allergen that which the person is allergic to so because of these allergens the complications of the eczema will get increased and it may also affect the lifestyle of the person and it may cause the disturbances in their life and their family life like in the sleep disturbances social life disturbances so the family's emotional relationships and the family life re- relational disturbances will be also mostly caused so now coming to the diagnostic criteria of the scabies so first of all how the diagnosis of a scabies can be done means either by the physical examination so mostly by the physical examination we can observe that be it may be a burrow type of condition between the fingers or because of this mite type of causing infections we can get to know that it might be a some kind of mite infection or because of any kind of skin infection and microscopical examination of the eggs and the feces that is the packets of the scabella of the organism so how this microscopical examination is done means by adding a drop of mineral oil on the suspected type of lesions of the person so after how this mineral oil is also added means the scrapings of the skin are some some portion is taken and on that portion mineral oil drops are added so by the addition of this mineral oil and these are tested and also by adding a drop of potassium hydroxide so such type of microscopical examination is done to confirm so skin biopsy is also sometimes done for the diagnosis but the skin biopsy is a very rare type of diagnostic criteria or diagnostic test means it is done in a very rare conditions not in every normal situation and coming to the diagnosis of the eczema so the diagnosis of the eczema can be done through same physical examination and by the patch testing and photo patch testing so this photo patch testing is done under the uv radiation that is the ultraviolet radiation prick testing and it is also done by total and specific ige antibodies so why i have specifically said regarding ige antibodies as we have seen in the patho of scabies it is of type 4 delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction here in eczema it is of ige mediated hypersensitivity so that's why here the total and specific type of ige antibodies are measured by the rast test so this rast test full form is radio allergo sorbent test so this is also a very less time consuming type of test and no anaphylactic reactions will also occur by this test so this test will be also useful and by doing the culture sensitivity test so these are some of the tests that which are done for the eczema now coming to the treatment part of scabies so most of the scabies is actually being treated by a first cycle of the treatment but in some ranges 5% of the cases may require the second time treatment after 7 to 10 days so the treatment is necessary but it may require one cycle or it may require two types of cycles now coming to the application of the scabicide like creams those should be applied all over the body from the below of the head so during the application of such type of scabicide creams we have to frequently wash our hands so by the frequently washing of the hands the infection will not to spread and after hand washing the cream should be also applied to the hands as the hands are frequently infected and even the itching may also get continued 
so even if treatment is going on for several weeks also some people may get this itching condition that's why we have to wash our hands frequently and after the washing the cream should be applied and the drugs or the agents that which are commonly used to treat this cabbage infection are 10% sulfur ointment 1% linden solution or lotion ivermectin 5% permethrin cream malathion 25% benzyl benzoate lotion antibiotics antihistamines and etc so coming to the different type of drugs that which are used in this cap is sulfur and linden so first of all this sulfur and linden the sulfur is being used very historically and it is still being used today so it is one of the traditional type of remedy or medicine now coming to the sulfur it is mostly used in 2.5% concentration so this 2.5% sulfur is used in ants and in the young children and 10% sulfur is used in adults also so this is a very safe and effective if it is combined with the or if it is a combination of yellow soft paraffin so it will be most safe and most effective but if it is used in higher concentrations it may cause irritations so because of a paraffin and because of any kind of sulfur sensitivities so we shouldn't use in higher concentration and the chemical name of this linden is gamma benzene hexachloride so it is also one of the organochloride and it's a 6 hour application means this linden should be applied in a 6 hour application it is very effective and when a single application of this linden cream is actually applied it will be washed after 12 to 24 hours means after one day it should be washed now coming to the adverse effects of this linden are toxicity and rare type of adverse effects are seizures and toxicity may occur if it is applied excessively or by chance or by any kind of accidental conditions if this linden is ingested orally so this in linden is shouldn't be actually used to the treatment of infants and the persons with seizure disorder and in the geriatric persons like elder persons and in the pregnant and breastfeeding women and the persons who are with irritated type of skins or any kind of sores on their skin so these are some of the contraindications of the linden and these are some of the points of sulfur and linden now coming to the malathion and ivermectin so coming to the malathion and ivermectin this malathion is also one of the scabies drug and by its single application to the adult that is 100 ml lotion is actually enough and it should be applied on to a cool and a dry skin means it is should be first of all washed and it should be dried with the help of brush or on the cotton and then this malathion should be applied also with the help of brush or cotton and then it should be left on the skin for 24 hours so after washing your hands with soap and water it should be again reapplied to the hands as the infection may occur and also 0.5% in concentration and after the second application should be done after a week so by taking this interval the skin irritation may also sometimes occur so it should be again applied and sometimes these are some of the common side effect now coming to the ivermectin so ivermectin is actually a anti parasitic agent so that which is used to treat this worm infections and it is also considered as a safe and effective type of treatment for the scabies now coming to the oral ivermectin it is also said to be as a very effective treatment for this norwegian scabies or crusted type of scabies so the persons who have already failed the treatment or who are unable to tra- treat or who are unable to tolerate the topical scabies treatment the oral ivermectin will be also a very good option now coming to the ivermectin dose it is 200 mcg per kg that is in oral and it should be actually taken in empty stomach with empty stomach and it is given in a total of two or more doses of this ivermectin for at least 7 days it can completely eliminate this scabies infection so these are the malathion and ivermectin now coming to the permethrin its 5% concentration of cream is really very effective in use and for the adult the single application of 30 to 60 grams of cream is enough and effective and it is actually applied to all over the body and left for about 8 to 12 hours 
so and then it is washed and for second application it is done after a week so by taking such cap it can be applied and some of the common side effects are irritation and reddening of the skin so the other type of treatment options like antihistamines these antihistamines are given to control the itching and to promote the sleep and there is also other type of lotions like uh, pramoxin lotion so this pramoxin lotion is used actually to treat itch and antibiotics are used to wipe out the infection and the steroid creams are actually used to reduce the swelling itch and the redness so these are the permethrin and some of the pramoxin lotion now these are the treatment options that which are available for the scabies now coming to the treatment options of the eczema so first of all this eczema can be actually treated either by the systemic type of medications or by the topical type of medications so first line treatment will be involving the emollients soap washing substitutes so by these emollients and soap washing substitutes if there is any kind of bacterial infection then oral antibiotic therapy will be given or the treatment that which will cure the condition so the antibiotics will be also chosen based upon the sensitivity of the wounds so these emollients means these are the topical type of hydrating agents that which soften the skin and also this prevents the skin from drying so which is one of the most worst condition in eczema so the eczema's first condition is it will dry off the skin so these emollients will be helping in also preventing the skin from drying so the topical corticosteroids are the steroids that which will be acting as a anti inflammatory type of the agents so these are very extremely useful and also very helpful in managing the eczema as there is all this anti inflammatory type of process so this topical type are divided into mild potent moderate potent potent and very highly or very potent so these are as the choice of the topical type of steroid that which depends upon the size and the severity of the skin disease and the potent and very potent cannot be actually applied as they are to be avoided on the delicate type of sites such as face flexures genitals etc so these are some of the areas now coming to the topical are they are available in the oil based or also in the aqueous type of based or as in the alcoholic solutions so these are some of the examples so mostly the ointment based type of topical agents are used as they can be absorbed very easily into the skin so with few preservatives and alcoholic type of solutions may also cause irritation to the broken skin so examples of these topical type of steroids are 0.5 to 2.5% hydrocortisone cream that which shows milder action and beta methazone valerate is 0.025% which is moderately potent and 0.1% beta methazone valerate that which is potent in action clobetazole propionate which is of 0.05% concentration it is very highly potent so these are some of the topical type of corticosteroids and some of the side effects that which can be seen are stretch marks acne like bruising type of acne and poor wound healing and worsening of the untreated infections so such type we can be seen so these are some of the creams that which are available like light regular and greasy so light type of creams are aqueous creams and diprobase and regular type of creams are like hydrous cream oil atom and greasy type of creams are 50% white soft paraffin and 50% liquid paraffin and emulsifying ointment so these are some of the options and coming to the allergic type of contact dermatitis these will be responding more than irritant type of contact dermatitis to the topical type of steroids and beta methazone is actually very likely less allergic when compared to all the other types of the topical type of preparations or the agents so these are less type of allergic and when coming to the combined preparations of the antibiotics or any with the combination of the steroids so these will be help in treating the mild type of bacterial type of eczematous skin and these should be also limited to the short term or the moderate usage if these are used for a long term then it will be developed into the side effects so calcineurin inhibitors are also used in most of the atopic dermatitis treatment so what is the mechanism of this calcineurin inhibitors means it will be inhibiting the calcineurin phosphatase 
so because of this calcium urine phosphatase the t cell activation will occur so if it is inhibited then it can't convert into t cell activation so some of the examples are like tacrolimus 0.1% or 0.03% ointment which should be applied two times a day these may be used to treat moderate to severe type of atopic dermatitis and the other are like pimecrolimus like 1% cream bd and it is used for short or long term use to treat mild to moderate atopic dermatitis and these can be used on all the body parts without producing the corticosteroid type of adverse effects and coming to the other type of uh, non pharmacological type of treatments like oatmeal baths or antihistamines so as antihistamines will be promoting the reduction of eg sensation and because of this pruritus so it is a very type of serious effect so these are given but actually oral antihistamines will not be having a direct effect as their main effect will be sedation so this may cause drowsiness and sleepy nature so if the antihistamines are to be given then they should be prescribed very carefully for school going children and for also the, the elders now coming to the ketoconazole it is a topical type of imidazole that which can be used as a shampoo or cream that which is used to treat the seborrheic type of dermatitis which is one of the type of dermatitis so in the seborrheic dermatitis higher type of sebum production can be observed so because of some of the bacteria or some of the organism like pityosporum ovale on the skin and the other preparations like cold tar preparations of ointments or creams so these can also be used for the management of the lichenified or hyperkeratotic eczema as it is a very effective and anti pruritic and other types like calamine lotion or burrow type of solutions like uh, aluminum lotion so these can also be used for the soothing type of purpose and there are some of the these are some of the topical type of therapies that which are used for the treatment of eczema now coming to the systemic therapies of the eczema oral prednisolone so this oral prednisolone will rapidly control the severe type of acute eczema as i have said in the previous slide long term steroid treatment shouldn't be taken as it may lead to serious type of adverse effect like either getting osteoporosis condition or either getting hypertension condition so other kind of drugs are like cyclosporin methotrexate azathioprine mycophenolate moftil so cyclosporin is one of the calcineurin inhibitor so which will be inhibiting t lymphocyte cell activation and a dose is given of 2.5 to 5 mg per kg so it can be very useful to take for a maximum level of treatment of duration for 8 to 12 months and side effects are like increased risk of malignancy and patients receiving this drug should actually regularly monitor their blood pressure renal function also and coming to the azathioprine it is a purine analog which will be inhibiting dna synthesis and it is mostly given in monotherapy so in adult conditions of eczema so major side effects are like bone marrow suppression toxicity and because of this bone marrow suppression it should be actually assessed by screening and the patients with low levels of tpmt tpmt means thiopurine methyl transferase so these shouldn't be given these drug and if borderline levels of this tpmt are there that will be requiring low doses so this tpmt shouldn't be so first of all patients with low levels of the tpmt shouldn't be given this drug and if borderline levels they may require low doses so methotrexate is also occasionally given so it is a type of second line type of treatment in unresponsive type of adult atopic dermatitis so it is given in moderate to severe atopic eczema so mycophenolate moftil will be also as a oral systemic agent and it will be preventing t cell and b cell proliferation by reducing inflammatory cytokine release so it will be also acting as a alternative and severe adult atopic condition where azathioprine and cyclosporine or cyclosporine are contraindicated and some of the side effects are gastrointestinal upset bone marrow suppression increased rate of infection in some kinds of selected type of cases of atopic dermatitis phototherapy will be also as a effective option and narrow band that is ultraviolet b will be as a treatment choice and some of the side effects are premature aging burning and increased risk of cancers and recently fda has approved a injectable type of monoclonal antibody drug that is by the name duplumab so duplumab 
or dupli map so by this dupli lumab is given for the severe eczema and it is also safe when it is used for directed but the major disadvantage is it is a very expensive drug now coming to the non pharmacological treatment so non pharmacological treatment for the scab is are by applying soothing lotions and by cleaning the bedding and the clothes of the patient and cooling the skin and also scrubbing all the area that which is affected with a brush during bath and bathing two times a day washing your hands with your soap after applying the cream or ointment or lotion and using your toilet essentials separately reapplying the cream to the hands after washing avoiding going near any dusty areas or any allergy causing areas or avoiding consuming any kind of allergy causing food items staying hydrated and trimming your fingernails toenails and keeping them neat and clean always staying happy and stress free and encouraging the patients and supporting them that the disease will be recurred soon and they can lead their normal lifestyle in a very soon period and the non pharmacological treatment for the eczema are daily soaking their hands in cool 0.65% aluminum acetate solution and always keeping the affected areas neat and clean avoid going to the dusty areas and avoiding the contact of the allergic substances same as like in the scab is and also in the allergic substances avoiding in the food giving lukewarm baths and use of the non soap cleansers like fragrance free and the ph should be up to neutral to low and using a wet wrap therapy and that is like wet wrap therapy means applying a damp type of tubular elasticized bandages that which are available in the market so by this damp tubular elasticized bandages to the limbs so to promote the hydration and also the absorption of the emollients or the topical type of steroids that is the corticosteroids and using of the soft clothing of the cotton fabric so mostly the cotton clothes are preferred when compared with the silk clothes and other clothes and keeping the fingernails toenails short and clean staying happy and stress free and staying cool and keeping that affected area in a hydrated condition so encouraging and supporting so that the disease will be recurred and they will be leading their normal lifestyle in a very soon conditions so that is for this video and thank you so much for listening to my presentation i hope you have already understood regarding the scabies and eczema and see you next week and thank you and don't forget to like share comment and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please give me your valuable comments and thank you